Now, discernment is a very big part of being a Christian. Otherwise, you can uh, be led astray. You can lead others astray. You can be self-deceived. You can deceive others. Um, discerning the Lord's body is important, which means those who are moving in the Spirit, those who are doing the Lord's work, um, um, discerning of spirits, um, the discernment of the gift of tongues, which is another interpretation of tongues, or discernment of tongues is another spiritual gift, which I've only met one person in my entire life who has that gift, but I can guarantee if you meet one person who's a genuine spiritual gift, it will probably just about change your life, I think. Because the Lord's gifts are so powerful. The Lord is a discerner of thoughts and intent of the heart. You know, he knows how people act and, uh, you know, use one another and lie about one another and so on. Which goes on within churches a lot. But this one, oh, this is important too. But this one uh, is about CERN um, and the Mandela effect. And I just thought I would read out some of the comments that people left. This is one I pinned on one of the videos I made. It says, uh, so he's talking about Robert Breaker, God bless him. Um, he says, misremember because he is blind to the great delusion. It's very important to understand God is going to allow a grand delusion for those who love not the truth. So that's how you, you, you have to discern who is in the body of Christ, who are loving the truth, and who are against the truth. And this is extremely important. The truth is not in him and never was. So he just literally just straight went, just went straight in and said, "Look, even though this guy's got a level of understanding, he's got a ministry and so on, but he's not been filled with the Holy Spirit proper. You know, the baptism of fire, which a lot of people even say that just doesn't happen today. Sadly, self-deluded. Yes, it is." An honesty issue. I am certain about Ezekiel twenty seven twenty eight. The suburb shall shake at the sound of the cry of the pilots. <laughs> well, suburb is a word first used in the fourteenth century, and pilot was not used until the fifteenth century. But every liar says both those words were always in Ezekiel, but not in the Septuagint, which of course does not make sense, because the Septuagint is is literally sort of uh, as close to the original um, Greek and Hebrew, if you like, uh, as, as you can get. So this, even their argument doesn't make any sense. Daniel 6.2 says, Presidents now, do you remember the three presidents and President Daniel? Not something I recall. Acts 27 has Paul saying he is an angel and he serves an angel. Do you remember an apostle Paul who served Christ or an angel Paul, who was an angel to serve. I am not misremembering, but the wicked wolves known as the clone bots. So he's asked what we've got like. I'm not sure where he gets this idea from. I know there are real clones out there and all that, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't go as far as to call Mr. Badger a clone bot. But anyhow, <clears throat> Isaiah 11:6. So this is the way. All of us um, remember it who have been a Christian for more than maybe three or four years. And the lion shall lay down with the lamb, and the bear will eat grass like an ox, and the young child will play, sorry, will play with his hand on the hole of the asp, for nothing shall hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain. Choose this day who you will serve. Yeah, the lion and the lamb. It says the, 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 the wolf and the lamb there. So I, I think that's a very good comment. Some some great truths in there. Um, what was this uh, comment here? 
about the Ark of the Covenant. Oh, you can read that. I, I, I thought this was very good. For some reason, this uh, wasn't br brought in to the, the posting, and I had to just uh, release it there into the posting. I'm not really sure why. But I'll just read through it. I'm a King James only person. I would like to ask a question to anyone that does not believe the changes. What was the purpose of all the Bible revisions and changes to the KJV authorized version? Was one of the reasons to remove the archaic words and make it easier uh, for modern people to understand? Uh, no, it's that changed to, to <laughs> just easier to understand. There you go. That's what they tell us. I know they had more sinister reasons, but that is a story for another day. Let me ask you this. I think this is an excellent point that he makes here. If the King James Version is always used a modern, easy to understand word in the Gospels, such as bottle, right? So that's not an archaic word. If, you know, for always, oh, it's always been bottle in the King James Bible, you know. Really? That, that's just a modern word. Why would they, you know, why would they want to update bottle to wineskins? <laughs> you know, so the so the word bottle is in the King James Bible, which is meant to be, you know, Old English, Ancient English. And all your modern translations now have got wineskins in them. <laughs> it's the reverse of what, what it was. It said wineskins in the King James Bible because that's what it was and there's more teaching and spiritual discernment behind that word than bottles. It used to say bottles I believe in the NIV or one of these New Age, New World translations, Jehovah Witness Bible maybe. Why not just leave it the way it was as bottles? Yeah, great point. I applaud that. That's excellent man. And the other word is stuff. You know, when talking about the abomination of desolation, don't go back into your house and get your stuff, it says now in the King James Bible. Stuff is a modern word, my friends. Why would they want to change that? That's not archaic. <laughs> Maybe because it was always wineskins in the King James Bible and it's no longer written that way. I've been a Bible-believing Christian for 30 odd years. Always remember the word wineskins. I, I do as well because the Lord showed me that about a few months before he got me to check it again and it changed the bottles you see so that's why I know it, it, it changed that's one of the the witnesses the Lord gave me because I had to look up exactly what they were to get a visual I watch all brother breakers videos think his doctrine spot on I've got friends who led me to the Lord and evangelist can't understand when these people see the changes I see well I mean read the comment above brother <laughs> I mean, the, the guy's really just said, look, you know, the guy's probably not even born again. He's, he's he's probably had the, you know, the gospel drummed into him so much that, that, um, I don't know. He's, it, it just amazes me that, you know, long-term, long-time Christians that have read the Word of God are meant to know the Word of God through the King James Bible just cannot see these simple changes. Just because it's supernatural, just because uh, you know the logical mind can't really um, immediately discern that how could there be changes? How could it be possible? But uh, you know, you just have to say, look, there has been, and that's it. There's other people who, who will agree with you. We call it the Mandela effect, but I believe it's been prophesied in the Bible. So it stressed some people out. Um, of course, it says God's word is eternal and cannot be changed. It's a living word. And then I asked them, how come the Bible mentions multiple times not to change the scripture subject to the plagues? Because so, so God is saying, of course, that men can meddle with uh, God's word, just as the remember the scribes did that as well J during Jesus' day. Jesus rebuked the scribes and Pharisees. The scribes are the ones who translated the word. God must have known in the end that Satan would be able to manipulate the written word. And then they say, oh, that's only for the people that are changing the Bible and making newer versions like the NIV and such. I say, are you sure? Then I ask about Amos 8-11, a famine in the land for the word of God. Sound familiar? You, well, you see, this, this is another example because if you're having millions of Bibles existing 
in, in the last days um, and we're in pretty much the tribulation um, some say we're approaching it some say that we're in it and and we still have millions of people with Bibles and yet so how, how is Satan going to affect the believers well he's, he's, he's changing the written word through this tech, new technology it could be associated with CERN um, yeah so I, I yeah it's, it's really an answer, answering Bible prophecy this this whole event um, the Mandela effect just just wonderful that there's believers out there that are really full of discernment and um, I think it's just wonderful so thanks for watching this video guys and uh, may the Lord bless you as always